Thessalonians chapter 1, greeting. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Thanksgiving. We ought to thank God always for you, brothers, as is fitting, because your faith flourishes evermore, and the love of every one of you for one another grows ever greater. Accordingly, we ourselves boast of you in the churches of God regarding your endurance and faith all your persecutions and the afflictions you endure. This is evidence of the just judgment of God. You may be considered worthy of the kingdom of God for which you are suffering. For it is surely just on God's part to repay with afflictions those who are afflicting you, and to grant rest along with us to you who are undergoing afflictions and at the revelation of the Lord Jesus from heaven. What does mighty angel blazing fire inflicting punishment on those who do not acknowledge God and on those who do not obey the gospel of our Lord Jesus? These will pay the penalty of eternal ruin, separated from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his power. When he comes to be glorified among his holy ones, to be marveled on that day among all who have believed. For our testimony to you was believed. Prayer. To this end, we always pray for you that our God may make you worthy of his calling and powerfully bring to fulfillment every good purpose and every effort of faith that the name of our Lord Jesus may be glorified in you, and you in him, and accord with the grace of our God and Lord Jesus Christ. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 Christ and the Lawless One We ask you, brothers, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and our assembling with him, not to be shaken out of your mind suddenly, or to be alarmed either by a spirit, or by an oral statement, or by a letter allegedly from us, to the effect that the day of the Lord is at hand. Let no one deceive you in any way, for unless the apostasy comes first and the lawless one is revealed, the one doomed to perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God, an object of worship, so as to see himself in the temple of God, claiming that he is God. Do you not recall that while I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in this time. The mystery of lawlessness is already at work, but the one who restrains is to do so only for the present, until he's removed from the scene. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord Jesus will kill with the breath of his mouth and render powerless by the manifestation of his coming. The one who's coming springs from the power of Satan in every mighty deed and in signs and wonders that lie and in every wicked deceit for those who are perishing because they have not accepted the love of truth so that they may be saved. Therefore God is sending them a deceiving power so that they may believe the lie that all who have not believed the truth but have approved wrongdoing may be condemned. But we ought to give thanks to God for you always, brothers, loved by the Lord. God chose you as the first fruits for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and belief in truth. To this end, He has also called you through our gospel to possess the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brothers, stand firm and hold fast to the traditions that you were taught, either by an oral statement or by a letter of ours. May our Lord Jesus Christ Himself and God our Father, who has loved us and given us everlasting encouragement and good hope through His grace, encourage your hearts and strengthen them in every good deed and word. Thessalonians chapter 3, request for prayers. Finally, brothers, pray for us, so that the word of the Lord may speed forward and be glorified, as it did among you, and that we may be delivered from perverse and wicked people, for not all have faith. The Lord is faithful. He will strengthen you and guard you from the evil one. We are confident of you and the Lord, that what we instruct you, you both are doing and will continue to do. May the Lord direct your hearts to the love of God and to the endurance of Christ. Neglect of work. We instruct you, brothers, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to shun any brother who conducts himself in a disorderly way, and not according to the tradition they received from us. For you know how one must imitate us, for we did not act in a disorderly way among you, nor did we eat food received free from anyone. On the contrary, in toil and drudgery, night and day we worked, as not to burden any of you. Note that we did not have the right, rather we wanted to present ourselves as a model for you, so that you might imitate us. In fact, when we were 
quarreled with you. We instructed you that if anyone was unwilling to work, neither should that one eat. We hear that some are conducting themselves among you in a disorderly way by not keeping busy, but minding the business of others. Such people we instruct in urge the Lord Jesus Christ to work quietly and to eat their own food. But you, brothers, do not be remiss doing good. If anyone does not obey our word as expressed in this letter, take note of this person not to associate with him. He may be put to shame. Do not regard him as an enemy, but admonish him as a brother. May the Lord of peace himself give you peace at all times, and in every way the Lord be with all of you. Final greetings. This greeting is in my own hand, Paul's. This is the sign in every letter. This is how I write. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you.